Look at that. Water. Yeah, I feel alive. That's right, we have a pump house and running water now. So welcome back to another episode of the Pacific Bin. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how exactly I built this pump house as well as what the total cost breakdown for having the well drilled, building the pump house, pretty much all in to have running water from like a vacant piece of land, as well as breaking down one of my biggest mistakes that I'm probably gonna have to go fix. Okay, so we're just gonna jump right into this. So the first consideration when you're building your pump house and figuring out where your well is gonna go. Oh. There's so much wildlife around here, I love it. Um, okay, so your first restriction or limitation when drilling a well and figuring out where your pump house is gonna go is you have to know where your septic field is because your well head, so that's this the stem in the ground that goes down, it's 170 feet. So this stem has to be at least 100 feet away from your septic system and I think you guys can figure out why that is. It's just, you don't want any of the sewage water seeping down, getting filtered through the ground, ultimately ending up in your water source that you're gonna be drinking from. But the location that I ended up with for the pump house is about 30 feet away from the home. And the reason that I ended up keeping it that close to the home is just because I didn't wanna have any long runs of electrical or long runs of like plumbing, having to run all the way through the woods to get to the home, navigating all these trees in the forest has been such a pain. So I wanted to keep that fairly close and I figured painting it black sort of makes it so it just sort of blends in with the forest and you don't even really see it. Once I had the location of the pump house and well figured out and like where I roughly wanted them, making sure I was within all their restrictions, I proposed that to the health department a couple months ago and paid a couple thousand dollars, around $2,000 in permits to be able to install my well. So about a month ago, I got the approval to drill the well. So I reached out to my well driller. He came out, they brought their big rigs on here, drilled down 170 feet until they got below the static water level. So if you guys don't know, there's like, there's a water table and they drill, I think it's like an extra 30 or 40 feet below that water table so that as the pump sucks up water, more and more water just flows into the pipes. So you have that steady stream of water. The well drilling process all in all was a pretty simple process. They just brought their two trucks on, the one drilling rig, one support truck, drilled the well, and that was it. Uh, then he, he called me up and said, hey, let me know when you're done with the pump house and we'll come in and throw the pumps in. So that brings me to my next point, which is the actual construction of the pump house. So the design that I ultimately came up with just from scrolling through Instagram and finding cool looking pump houses is this five foot wide by seven foot deep Scandinavian styled home. The first step in building any structure, of course, is the foundations. Before I started like laying any of the forms for setting the concrete, I made sure that the ground underneath the home was gonna be solid. So we actually ended up laying some quarry spalls, which is like three to four inch rock deep underneath this. So over time, the soils won't shift and the, ho the house is pretty much gonna stay really sturdy right where it is. Once the foundation was all stabilized, like the grounds were stabilized, I was able to frame out a two by four foundation and then I ran back and forth to the river, filling up buckets, uh, mixing my own concrete, and pouring the concrete foundation. So after a couple days of the concrete curing, which I think I gave it like three or four days, which it technically takes like a month for the concrete to fully set, but after a couple days, you can shed the forms and, and start working on the next bit. So I then framed uh, all of the, the wooden walls with my brother-in-law. Uh, we came out here, we used uh, Tapcon concrete anchors. So pretty much you just drill a hole in the wood and then you drill a hole in the concrete and then you set the anchor in there and we did those I think we did like four or five per wall so this thing wasn't going anywhere which leads me to my first mistake and this was this was at like the peak of all wood being just the highest it's been in like 10 years um, so I ended up buying just all normal wood and I should have for the perimeter that actually gets anchored down to the concrete I should have used treated wood. It's not the end of the world right now uh, in, in the long run or maybe even in a couple months once things slow down <laughs> It's not gonna be slowing down anytime soon Oh you need to calm down there, buddy. But in the long run, once once everything's done with the property, I'll probably be able to jack the whole home up about an inch and a half and then reset some pressure treated timber. But so far, I mean, we've had an extremely rainy winter here. So far, no rain has got in and this thing has stayed like completely dry. I framed up the walls. I cladded the whole outside in 3 8 inch plywood. 
um, which also cost me a fortune. So now that the foundation and all the walls had been framed and the whole thing was covered in wood, I was able to start the actual like water proofing of the system. So one more note on the foundation here, which I don't know why I didn't mention, this is one of the most important things. You wanna frame in some tubing, some PVC tubing, just like drop tubes in the foundation so that your well guy and electrician are able to run the power and all their piping up into the house without actually having to drill through the foundation. It just makes it way easier if you just set a PVC pipe in in the first place and that way when the concrete's done you have a perfect hole. So what I did is I actually made four holes. So the way my well guy described it to me is that you want to have water in, water out. So that comes from the actual well head it goes into the pump house, gets filtered, goes to the pressure tank, and then the water leaves to go back into the house. And he also said, include a third one for your electrician to run up into the pump house for the heater and to drive all the pumps and everything. So I added one more just for future proofing because I most likely in the next couple of years will build an A-frame or some other type of Airbnb further back in the lot. So for the weatherproofing, I wrapped the whole thing in Tyvek, made sure it was super locked in. It rains a ton out here in the Northwest, so I really wanna make sure I just nail all the waterproofing elements. Then I was able to lay some tar paper over the roof and I could start the actual like finished cladding on what this thing's gonna look like. So after going through Pinterest and Instagram a whole bunch, I landed on going with, uh, it's a hardy board material, so it's like a concrete board, which it is nasty stuff if you're cutting it. You definitely wear a mask. I didn't and I was like coughing for a week after. But I wanted to go with hardy board because I could get that like Scandinavian style that I'm going for with this property while still being semi cost effective. I thought about cladding the whole thing in metal and look, ran the prices and it was like, ha, no. <laughs> so I, I did go with a metal roof on it um, and wrapped the whole thing in hardy board. So the way I did it is I pretty much went around each of the corners, um, took some two inch by two inch trim, wrapped all the corners, wrapped all the edges, and then I came back in and filled in with all the, the eight inch planks. So once the thing had been completely covered in planks, I caulked the whole thing, but then then uh, a week or two after, once we got a little dry spell, everything sort of dried out, I was able to get it all painted. So we've only thrown one coat of paint on it so far. It's just sort of, I, know, I just really wanted to see what it looked like painted. Um, but I'll probably be doing one more coat at the very end of construction uh, when I'm done going in and out of this thing and running trenches and having mud everywhere. Highly recommend metal roofs. They will literally last forever. Hardy board was super easy to work with. And I mean, it looks pretty good. <laughs> So here it is, here is the pressure tank, here's the water line coming out of the well, here's my 220 volt adapter that I'll plug into my generator and I, I do whenever I want power or whenever I want water. And then there's a uh, electrical box up top there. But currently I was running it earlier today, um, so there's already pressure in the tank. So we just turn this on and I'm turning it the wrong way. Oh, I'm doing it the right way. Look at that, water. Well guys, that's pretty much your all in everything you need to know on building your pump house and doing ground up water from vacant land. If you guys wouldn't mind dropping me a like below, it really helps to get these videos out to more people. These videos do take me a decent amount of time to put together and take the time to film and really make sure I'm like giving you guys the most value. So if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the channel, it really helps a lot. And also if you guys aren't following along on Instagram, you're definitely gonna wanna follow there. I put all the most like recent up-to-date info um, when I'm actually working on site I'm showing you guys what I'm doing and we do fun stuff like I just flew a helicopter from Seattle all the way out here we landed and I showed a couple friends the property um, yeah and it's just it's, it's a good time so I definitely appreciate a, a follow along there too and I will see you guys in the next video peace <laughs>